The essential technology, the, the holy grail breakthrough that's needed is a, a rapid and completely reusable rocket system. So this has never been accomplished before. So with Falcon 9, we've de demonstrated a lot of reuse of the, the, the boost stage and of the fairing. And, uh, and that, that's, a, that's a big step in the right direction. With Starship, we're aiming for full and rapid reusability. Truly remarkable. SpaceX's Orbital Class Falcon 9 blasted off, then returned to Earth on December 21st of 2015, ushering in a new era in which reusable rockets could make sending probes and people into space a bit more affordable. Seven years later since that fateful day, and SpaceX now boasts of launching more rockets than anyone, including entire nations. Why, this year alone, Musk's space company has carried out nearly 60 Falcon rocket launches, more than the total of China's launches in 2021, which was 55. Having said that, SpaceX is now better at landing their Falcon 9 rockets than I am at flying kites. I just can't seem to get the angle right. But that raises a question. With such great landing ability, why doesn't SpaceX just land Starship boosters onto the drone ship like it does with Falcon 9? Well, that's due to the fact that SpaceX has hinted at an unexpected desire to develop marine recovery systems for the Starship program several times. You can actually see it clearly in a series of SpaceX job postings. Since it first began bending metal for its steel Starship development program in late 2018, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk, executives, and the company itself have long maintained that both Super Heavy Boosters and Starship upper stages will perform what are known as Return to Launch Site Landings, abbreviated to RTLS. It's no longer clear if those long-stated plans are set in stone. But oddly enough, despite repeatedly revealing plans to develop marine recovery assets for Starship, SpaceX's recent marine engineer and naval architect job postings never specifically mentioned the company's well-established plans to convert retired oil rigs into vast floating Starship launch sites, weighing several thousand tons and absolutely dwarfing the football field-sized drone ships that SpaceX recovers Falcon boosters with. It goes without saying that towing an entire oil rig hundreds of miles to and from port is not an efficient or economical solution for rocket recovery. It would also make very little sense for SpaceX to hire a dedicated naval architect without once mentioning that they'd be working on something as all-encompassing as the world's largest floating launch pad, which leaves us with three obvious explanations for the mentioning. First, it might be possible that SpaceX is merely preparing for the potential recovery of debris or intact floating ships or boosters after intentionally expending them on early orbital Starship flight tests. Second, SpaceX might have plans to strip an oil rig or two without fully converting them into launch pads and then use those rigs as landing platforms designed to remain at sea indefinitely. Those platforms might then transfer landed ships or boosters to smaller support ships tasked with returning them to dry land. Third, and arguably most likely, is that SpaceX might be exploring the possible benefits of landing super heavy boosters at sea. Through its Falcon rockets, SpaceX has slowly but surely refined and perfected the recovery and reuse of orbital class rocket boosters, 24 out of 103 of which occurred back on land. Rather than coasting 500 to 1,000 kilometers downrange after stage separation and landing on a drone ship at sea, those 24 boosters flipped around, canceled out their substantial velocities, and boosted themselves a few hundred kilometers back to the Florida or California. California coast, where they finally touched down on basic concrete pads. Unsurprisingly, canceling at around 1.5 kilometers per second of downrange velocity, equivalent to around Mach 4.5, and fully reversing that velocity back towards the launch site is an expensive maneuver, costing quite a lot of propellant. For instance, the nominal 25 second re-entry burn performed by almost all Falcon boosters likely costs around 20 tons of propellant. The average 35 second single engine landing burn used by all Falcon boosters likely costs about 10 tons of propellant. Normally, that's all that's needed for a drone ship booster landing. But for RTLS landings, Falcon boosters must also perform a large, approximately 40-second boost back burn with three Merlin 1D engines, which likely costs an extra 25 to 35 tons of propellant. In other words, an RTLS landing generally ends up costing at least twice as much propellant as a drone ship landing. 
using the general rocketry rule of thumb that every 7 kilograms of booster mass produces, booster mass reduces payload to orbit by 1 kilogram, and assuming that each reusable Falcon booster requires about 3 tons of recovery specific hardware, which are mostly legs and grid fins, a drone ship landing might reduce Falcon 9's payload to low Earth orbit by around 5 tons, from 22 to 17 tons. The extra propellant needed for an RTLS landing might reduce it by another 4 to 5 tons to 13. Likely less than coincidentally, a Falcon 9 with drone ship booster recovery has never launched more than 16 tons to LEO. While SpaceX hasn't provided NASA's ELV perf calculator with data for orbits lower than 400 kilometers, it generally agrees, indicating that Falcon 9 is capable of launching about 12 tons with an RTLS landing and 16 with a drone ship landing. This is all to say that landing reusable boosters at sea will likely always be substantially more efficient. And the reasoning why SpaceX has always said that Starship's super heavy boosters will avoid maritime recovery is that landing and recovering giant rocket boosters at sea is inherently difficult, risky, time consuming, and expensive. That makes rapid reuse on the order of multiple times per day or within the week almost impossible and inevitably adds the cost of recovery, which could actually be quite significant for a rocket that SpaceX wants to eventually cost just a few million dollars per launch. However, so long as at-sea recovery costs less than a few million dollars, there's always a chance that certain launch profiles could be drastically simplified and end up cheaper by the occasional at-sea booster landing. If the alternative is a second, dedicated launch to partially refuel one Starship, it's possible that a sea landing could give Starship the performance needed to accomplish the same mission in a single launch, lowering the total cost of launch services. If, like with the Falcon 9, a sea landing could boost Starship's payload to LEO by a third or more, the regular sea recovery of super heavy boosters would also necessarily cut the number of launches SpaceX needs to fill up a Starship moon lander by a third. Given that SpaceX and NASA have been planning for Starship tanker launches to occur around 12 days apart, recovering boosters at sea becomes even more feasible. And in additional theory, the Starship launch vehicle that CEO Elon Musk has recently described could be capable of launching anywhere from 100 150 to 200 or more tons to low Earth orbit with full reuse and RTLS booster recovery. With so much performance available, it may matter less than it does with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy if an RTLS booster landing cuts payload to orbit by a third or half or even more. At the end of the day, just 100 tons to LEO may be more than enough to satisfy any realistic near-term performance requirements. But until the Starship and Super Heavy booster are reusable enough to routinely launch launch multiple times per week, let alone per day, and marginal launch costs have been slashed to single digit millions of dollars, it's hard to imagine SpaceX willingly leaving so much performance on the table by foregoing at sea recovery out of principle alone. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with great SpaceX, and with much anticipation, my team and I will see you next time.